Hi everybody, Jeremy here from Video Test Studio and today I'm going to share with you how to do that AirPort Flipboard text effect in DaVinci Resolve. So if you're ready, let's check it out. Alright, so we are in DaVinci Resolve right now, we're on the edit page and we're going to start by bringing a new Fusion composition in our timeline. Then we're going to move over to Fusion. We're going to start by bringing a new background in our working area and bring the alpha channel down to zero to gain transparency and then we're going to just link the output of that background to the media out. Then I'm going to bring my first text node in and I'm going to link the output of that text node to the background one. We're going to draw our text, we're going to write DaVinci. I'm going to change the font for Montserrat. Then I'm going to increase the tracking to 1.55, which allows us to have space between each letters. And we're going to go over to shadings. And then here we're going to go to select element number four and we're going to just enable it. This is what we're going to use to create our background. So here I'm just going to scroll down and I'm going to change the color already from blue to black and then here we're gonna adjust the extended horizontal to 3 and the round to 0 0.05 now we have a pretty good base to start creating our effect but the only thing is as you see not each letter are the same width uh, for the box right now the E is smaller than the C we're gonna adjust that by going back to text scrolling all the way down we're gonna open advanced control and then here we're gonna just untick use font kerning and we're gonna put the force model space from zero to one. This allows us to have the exact same amount of space between each letter, regardless of the shape of that letter. So right now, all our box behind the text are the same width. Now we're gonna need to recreate the second text with the same property, but we're not gonna do everything from scratch. So we're simply gonna copy this text and paste it. Then we're gonna just link that output to our merge we're gonna write something else. So right now uh, we're gonna put resolve, for example. And now we're gonna move on to creating the animation and the goal of the animation basically gonna be to move from text one to text two with that flip board animation. Later on, I'm gonna share with you also how to use the scramble text effect to have like random letters and then your text showing up. Right now, first, we're gonna create two text instance for text one and text two. So I'm gonna select my text one, copy it, then I'm gonna paste it right behind it and i'm gonna link it here to the background then we're gonna do the same thing with text 2 we're gonna just copy it and we're gonna paste the instance right there and link it to the composition now we're gonna bring a rectangular mask and we're gonna link the output of that mask to text 2 here in the rectangle we want to put the width at the maximum and we're gonna just the center y to 0.75 as you can see, it's perfectly split our text in two. And right now we're gonna click invert. Then we're gonna copy that mask and we're gonna paste it right above text one and link it to text one. Then here going to invert and untick invert. And then we're gonna paste it again above instance text one and we're gonna link it to it. So right now it might be a bit confusing, but basically we've created a different type of letter. So we have this one that's gonna act as a background. Then we have this second one that gonna act as a background as well at some point. And we have those two that are gonna be animated to create the flip board effect. What we're gonna do essentially, we're gonna just animate here in transform the X rotation to make them flip like that. But we're not gonna do it directly on the node, we're gonna use a follower modifier. So first off, I want here in text one to adjust the pivot to 0 0.02. Then I'm gonna go to text two and I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna go to transform and adjust it to 0 0.02. Then I'm going to go back to text one, going to text, right click, go to follower, go to the modifier tab, adjust the delay at one, then adjust here the order from automatic to random but one by one. We're going to be at frame 10, going to the shadow, going to frame 10, then going to transform. We're going to drop here a keyframe on the X, then we're going to go to frame 15 and we're going to put the X at minus 90. Then we're going to go to text two. We're going to go to text, right click, follower, modifier. Here, exact same thing. We're going to put the delay at one. And then we're going to go and switch from automatic to run down, but one by one. Going to transform, still frame 15. We're going to drop here a keyframe on the X at 90. And then we're going to go to frame 20 and bring it back to zero. Now if we play it, as you can see, we have an animation, but it's not exactly a flipboard animation. That's where those two are gonna come into place. The instance text one and instance text two. 
as of right now, they are still connected to the original text one and text two. We're gonna disconnect them and use them as background. So before doing that, you want to make sure that you have your final text, because then you will need to change your text, not only in text two, but also in the instance text two. So right now, let's just disconnect them. I'm gonna right click the instance, and then I'm gonna remove the follower animation for the instance text two, go to instance text one, the instance, and remove the follower animation. So now the follower animation is only on text one and on text two. And those two right here serve as background. And now if we play it, as you can see, we get that flipboard animation. Now this is if you want to switch from one word to the other. If you wish to start from nothing and then having one word appearing, you can absolutely do that by going here to text one. Then here you're gonna go over to shading and then here you're gonna select element number one and you're just gonna toggle the enable. And now you're gonna start with empty frames and then your text gonna come into place. Another possibility could be to just continue to enable that and I think what we had here at the beginning and add some text scrambling at the beginning to make it look like the flipboard was searching for those letters. So here I'm gonna copy text one, then I'm simply gonna paste it. I'm gonna make sure to remove the follower animation. I'm then gonna link it here to my composition. And here we're gonna simply right click and select text scramble. Then we're gonna go to the modifier. Here I want to remove all the characters that are not in capital. And I'm gonna put the randomness at two. Drop a keyframe here at frame 10. Go to frame zero and put the randomness at one. Now if we play it, as you can see, we have that scrambled text, but it doesn't switch back to our first animation. So we're gonna use a dissolve node. I'm just gonna delete here my merge. I'm gonna bring a dissolve node by hitting shift space on my keyboard, search for dissolve and bring that in. Then I want to link here my merge to the yellow arrow and I want to link my scrambled text to the green arrow. Here I'm gonna go to frame 13 and I'm gonna drop a keyframe on the background foreground at one. And then I'm gonna go to frame 14 and bring the background foreground down to zero. And now if we play it, we have that scrambling and then moving to the flipboard animation. Personally, I like it like that, but you can change here the bottom and top color of your box. I'm gonna show you how in a second. First here, if you want to change the color of only the second text, you can always just go to shading and then here in select element number four, we could switch it for example for red. And now you will go from black to red. But if you want to have a shading between the top and bottom, you will need to go back to instance text. Then here in shading, we're just gonna de-instance the color group. Same here with instance text too. We're gonna go to shading and de-instance the color group. Then here we're gonna go to instance text one and we're gonna change the color here in select element number four to whatever shade of black you want. So here I'm gonna go with one, 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 one. I'm just gonna copy that to reuse it. So basically we'll have the top part being black and we'll have the bottom part being a tiny bit more towards the gray. Then here text one is at the top, so it's just gonna stay black. Then text two, which is gonna bring it towards the gray. So we're simply gonna paste the same color code. And then here we're simply gonna need to do the same thing with our scramble. So I'm simply gonna disconnect the first text, copy it, paste an instance, and then here link those two together and link the merge to the dissolve. Then here I'm gonna copy my rectangle, just paste it, link it to the instance and then paste a second one, link it to the text one and then unting invert. And basically we've done pretty much the same thing as here where we have one text at the bottom and one text at the top. On the bottom text, we're just gonna go and change the color. So I'm gonna go over to shading. I'm gonna go to select element number four. And then here, I'm just gonna right click on the red, the instance color group. And here I'm gonna change the color. And that's it, we have our final effect. That's pretty much it, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know in the comment what kind of video you'd like to see next and see you in the next one, bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition, and templates built only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack that contains over 150 elements. Link in the description below or at videoeditorstudio.com.